Hi guys, I'm your host Yashasvi and this is Visified. In our first video, we're going to cover the question of what is a universe actually made up of? And we're not speaking about the universe being made up of elements like carbon, oxygen, helium, hydrogen, but we're talking about the nature of the, of the universe in a more fundamental and a deeper way. We all know that the universe is made up of really, really tiny atoms. The radius of an atom can vary between 0.3 Armstrong to 3 Armstrong. Naturally, the next question which arises is what are atoms made up of? Atoms are made up of a centrally positively charged nucleus along with electrons revolving around it. The nucleus consists of neutrons and protons. But then, what are neutrons and protons made up of? Are there any other subatomic particles like the neutrons and the protons and the electrons? To answer all these questions, we have the standard model of particle physics. The standard model of particle physics constitutes of all the particles, all the subatomic particles, as well as all the forces that are found in the universe. Not all, uh, it doesn't cover gravity, but we'll get into that later. The standard model consists of 12 particles. Yes, only 12 particles. Only 12 particles make up you, they make up me, they make up the entire universe, they make up the stars, they make up the radiation we cannot see. All of these are just the 12 particles in combination. Apart from the particles, the standard model also covers four force carriers. And along with the four force carriers, it, consist, uh, it consists of one field. So in all, there are 17 boxes in the standard model. And we're going to take a look at it. We have 17 boxes divided into four different categories. We'll be representing each of this category by a different color to make the understanding process easy. The upper two rows in purple in the given table are called as the quarks. The quarks are essential building blocks of neutrons and protons. The proton consists of two up quarks and one down quark, while the neutron consists of one up quark and two down quarks. The six quarks are named as up, down, charm, strange, top and bottom. There are many more particles in our universe apart from the quarks. The next set of particles we are going to deal with is known as the leptons. You can find the leptons colored as green in the given table. The word leptons is taken from the Greek word leptos, meaning very small and fine. Again, there are six types of leptons in the standard model. They are the electron, the electron neutrino, the muon, the muon neutrino, tau, and the tau neutrino. You might be wondering what neutrinos are. Neutrinos are like ghost particles. They are very hard to detect and they are invisible. They pass straight through you, they pass straight through the earth. The sun emits a large number of neutrinos. There are roughly trillions of neutrinos passing through you every second. There is a pattern to the standard model. Uh, there are three columns of each, the quark and the lepton. There are three columns. Why, why couldn't they have been laid in two columns or maybe just one column? Why, why was there a need for three different columns? The answer is that these three columns represent the three different generations of matter. The first column represents the first generation of matter, the second column represents the second generation of matter, and the third column uh, describes the third generation of matter. The first generation of matter is the lightest and the most abundant. It consists of the up quark, the down quark, the electron, and the electron neutrino. The second generation of matter consists of heavier particles which are relatively unstable than the first generation of matter. Uh, they are the charm, quark, the strange quark, the muon and the muon neutrino. The third generation of matter is the most unstable and the heaviest generation of matter. It consists of the top quark, the bottom quark, tau and the tau neutrino. It is important to note that the second and the third generations are identical to the first generation of matter. The only thing that distinguishes them is that the second and the third generation of matter are heavier. 
These are all the 12 subatomic particles that are found in the universe. Now, next we come on to the force carriers. There are four fundamental forces found in the universe, namely gravity, electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. However, the standard model integrates only three of the forces into its table. It does not include gravity because we'll discuss that later at the end of the video. The most familiar force to us out of the three forces which the standard model integrates is the electromagnetic force. It causes the electrons to be bounded to the nucleus of the atom. It is the basic reason for chemistry. It is the basic reason for the existence of you and for the existence of me. So it is a very vital force in our day-to-day -day life. And the particle that transmits the electromagnetic force is the photon. You can find it uh, on the second position of the column marked in red. Moving on to gluons. As the word suggests, gluons glue something together. They glue together quarks so that quarks can form neutrons and protons because as we discussed previously, neutrons are made up of quarks and protons are also made up of quarks. The gluons transmit the strong nuclear the remaining two force carriers, the W boson and the Z boson, transmit the weak nuclear force. It can be difficult to visualize the weak nuclear force in action because we don't really deal with it in our day-to-day -day life. But just to clear things up, the weak nuclear force helps in the decay of particles. The last yellow block in the table is the Higgs field. You might have heard this term a plethora of times ever since the discovery done by CERN in the year of 2012. But what exactly is the Higgs field? In order to understand what a Higgs field is, we will first need to learn what a field is. So you cannot see a field, but you can definitely sense its presence. For instance, when you hold an iron nail close to a magnet, the magnet attracts the iron nail. This is the effect of the magnetic field. But you cannot see the magnetic field. However, you can definitely sense its presence. Now, the next example is a gravitational field. You are on the surface of the Earth because of the gravitational field. It is because the gravitational field is acting on you. Otherwise, you would be floating away. All of these are the examples of fields. Now we will take a quick look at a visual which will help you understand what a field actually is. The curves and the disturbances which are at a high altitude represent the particles in the given image. They represent the particles and the sheet beneath the the plane sheet beneath the particles is the field. Essentially Particles are disturbances in a field. Fields are present everywhere in space-time. They permeate all the spaces. Particles are like localized disturbances in fields and they are not present everywhere. In physics, all of the particles have an associated field with them. Example, uh, the quarks, they have their own field. Now, coming back to the Higgs field. The Higgs field is like any other field. It permeates all of the space-time. What makes it interesting is that it imbues mass to the particles. It means that particles are just massless and when they interact with the Higgs field, the Higgs field gives the particle its mass. The interaction of the particles with the Higgs field gives the mass of the particle. Since the Higgs field exists everywhere in the universe, each and every particle interacts with it. And this is how the particles get their mass. Now we are at the end of this video and as I promised, we are going to discuss why gravity isn't integrated into this framework of the standard model. Gravity isn't included into the standard model because the force carrier of gravity called as the graviton has not been experimentally found yet. It is hypothesized to be a spin 2 particle but experimental observations haven't found such thing as of yet. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you all learned something new today because that's our mission 
and please hit the subscribe button and a big thumbs up if you liked it.